Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And For our daily word today, we're in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 31, and I want to share with you from verse 7 through to verse 11, and then let's, let's talk just for a few minutes today about the God of the nations. It was strong and beautiful with wide spreading branches, for its roots went deep into abundant water. No other cedar in the garden of God could rival it. No cypress had branches to equal it. No plain tree had boughs to compare. No tree in the garden of God came close to its beauty. Because I made this tree so beautiful and gave it such magnificent foliage. It was the envy of all the other trees of Eden, the garden of God. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, because Egypt became proud and arrogant, and because it set itself so high above the others, with its top reaching to the clouds, I will hand it over to a mighty nation that will destroy it as its wickedness deserves. I have already discarded it. So naturally, the, the focus of the prophets of God as the Lord leads them is on Israel. Israel is God's chosen people, chosen to uniquely represent Him, chosen as a priestly people, uh, a people to spread the knowledge of God to the ends of the earth, uh, a people who would represent the Lord, His holiness, His goodness would be a kingdom unto the Lord. And, and of course, we know that the people of Israel were charged to be stewards of the Word of God, that they would be blessed to be a blessing, and then in fact, that that blessing to the world would be fulfilled in the coming of the Messiah, that the Messiah, God's Messiah, God's anointed King, Jesus Christ, would come from the people of Israel. So it is it is quite natural that the, the focus of the prophets would be on Israel. But here, in chapter 31, we have, have this as a part of a section in Ezekiel where God is pronouncing judgment on Egypt. Uh, God is, of course, not just God of Israel. God is the King of all. He is the God of all nations. And, and I'll tell you, I was... I was drawn to, to verse 9 here where God says, because I made this tree so beautiful, and then for a few verses there, God extols the beauty of this, this tree. God said, because I made this tree so beautiful. God had chosen Israel, of course, but God is sovereign over all, and God is concerned about all nations, and God is, we see, involved in all nations and involved, of course, in Egypt, as he expressed, expresses here. We, we remember, of course, God's concern for Nineveh. That's why God would send the prophet Jonah. This is not an, an Israelite city. This is a city of Assyria, the capital city of, of Assyria, and yet God has concern for Nineveh. And this also calls to mind uh, Paul's sermon before the Areopagus. It's uh, also known as, as Mars Hill. This is it's this hill on the, the northwestern side of, of Athens, and, and this is a place where the, the, the great leaders of the people would, uh, would meet, the people of Athens. It was a body of thinkers and leaders. They, they met to debate and to evaluate uh, you could say spiritual and philosophical ideas, and and of course those have great great overlap. And I, I want to want to share a a portion of this of, uh, of Paul's sermon, his message that's recorded in the book of Acts. And I, I want to ask you to listen for God's involvement in the nations, and to hear in this passage His sovereignty over the nations, and especially. Listen for his purpose, his purpose with the nations. So this is Acts chapter 17, 
verses 22 through to 31. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious in every way. For as I walked along, I saw your many shrines, and one of your altars had this inscription on it, To an unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since He is Lord of heaven and earth, He doesn't live in man-made temples, and human hands can't serve His needs, for He has no needs. He gives life and breath to everything, and He satisfies every need. From one man, He created all the nations throughout the, the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and He determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward Him and find Him, though He is not far from any one of us. For in Him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are His offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now He commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to Him. For He has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man He has appointed, and He proved to everyone who this is by raising Him from the dead. So we see in verse 27 here of Acts 17 that his purpose was for the nations, for the peoples, to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he's not far from any one of us. So let's bring this home then. Our nation's purpose, and, and I, I'm not speaking about any other nation, let's just Let's just focus on where it is that God has placed us. Our nation's purpose, given from God, is um, for people to find the God who is near to them. We, uh, the church, are right at the center, right at the heart of that mission. God has placed people in our nation because it was if you'll let me say it this way, it was their best shot at accepting Jesus Christ, their best shot at finding God. God placed people in our nation, in our community, in our lives when He did because it was their best shot at meeting and accepting Jesus Christ. And, and therefore, it is, it is our calling to offer them Christ, to offer Christ to, uh, to our, our nation, to the people of our nation. We are, friends, at the very center of this mission of the Lord. And so it, this, this casts a whole new light, doesn't it, um, I think, on, on patriotism, on w one of the, the reasons that we are called to love our nation is the fact that God has placed us here and placed others here so that we might help them find their way to the God who is near to them. God has given us this nation, this people, to love, and especially to love by inviting them to life in Jesus Christ. So let us pray then, friends, that we would be useful to God in this great purpose, for He is Lord of all. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.